We're here today to discuss different paths to success in the finance space. And I'm going to mm-hmm. take it to the whiteboard for those that are watching. I'm going to take it to the whiteboard and we'll kind of really put out a whole case study for you specifically. Mm-hmm. I want to go into really origin. Where did it first start for you? Then we'll build and go into like, you know, revenue, different numbers, niche markets, mm-hmm. industries, what you're learning, that kind of a thing. So if it's all right with you and we can share some, you know, numbers and I'll even share my experience as well uh, this way everyone listening and really gets the full context of how important it is to really make decisions on your financial freedom journey based Mm -hmm. on based on your your purpose values health so it's not necessarily how much money can i make doing this thing which i think a Mm -hmm. lot of us tend to make decisions that way especially when we're for a job you know it's like yeah if i can make 15 dollars an hour doing this versus 10 dollars an hour doing that but what if the $10 an hour job was a stepping stone that put you in a position where you could fulfill your purpose that much more efficiently rather than chasing the dollar? So talk to me in regarding yourself. If you could go back, let's let's rewind a couple of years. And you're a young guy. I'm, I'm 27. How old are you? 29. Yeah. 29. So you got two years on me. Talk to me about what was that first book, video or influential person in your life that steered you in the direction of looking in the financial industry. And there's a lot of people watching, mm-hmm. especially on, on my channel. I have a, a really nice sized group of clients that I've been working with on their personal finances, you know, mm-hmm. get out of debt and get their credit right. And then they started asking like, hey, I'm, I got really good at this personally. And now I have my brothers and sisters and family, friends, colleagues, they're starting to ask me what I'm doing with my finances. They're seeing the the, the changes that I'm making in my life and how much more efficient I am with money. And they're kind of still at the same level two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. And now I'm Mm -hmm. at a much higher level. And so now I'm thinking about how I could maybe provide some value and that's Making when it, I kind of yeah. yeah I go into it and it gets really exciting when they when they say that because I'm very passionate about finances and figuring out like well, what's the path to success in that and mm-hmm. knowing that there's many different paths to success in the in the financial space and also there's just so much opportunity on the income production side of it but also mm-hmm. the, the impact because you're dealing with something that people literally make decisions on every single day of their life, probably multiple times a day, which is their money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so the first, this first started for me, um, when I was in my early twenties. So that was a very, uh, turbulent time in my life. I was living on my own. I had moved out of my house when I was 18 years old. Um, started, you know, down the path of like, just figuring out life. I didn't really know what I was going to do. Prior to that, I was like in the medical industry. And I was like, this is the way I want to be able to serve and help people. You know, I see myself being able to, you know, make a lot of change. I'm, I'm a huge, you know, nerd about anything that I get into and anything I dive into, like I will search to try and build my expertise as much as I can so I can make a huge impact. Um, that all changed for me when I was around uh, I was around 21 and I actually had a pretty big um, life-changing event um, that actually made me like reevaluate life. So I actually got jumped and had my jaw broken. And it was a pretty 21. impactful event. 21. Yeah, 21. Wow. So at this point, like I like life completely stopped for me. Like I had my jaw wired for like six weeks. Um, I really wasn't, I was working like, uh, I believe like at a restaurant at a time, you know, not making that much money. Um, and I had this point of like, you just huge, I had a chance to like really look at things for the first time and say, all right, like I'm not on the right path. Am I doing what I need to be doing? And during that time, I also started picking up books because I just had the extra time. I was like, I might as well start reading and might as well start educating myself. Um, one of the first few books that I read, which is one that a lot of people start off with, was actually Rich Dad Poor Dad. We'll now we all know Robert Kiyosaki. <laughs> and um, I remember reading that book and it completely like turned my world upside down. I was like, 
And I, I grew up in like Section 8 housing. I really didn't have a lot financially growing up. That's actually a huge part of my um, story as well, too, I'll dive into. But after reading that book, I really start to see things a lot differently in life. Like, you know, we're all taught, hey, you know, go to school, you know, get the right job. You know, you'll have success. You'll have those opportunities. Um, but I started to see a whole different reality that like, you know, for the people out there that are able to make the biggest impact and also create the biggest income, you know, they choose more of like an entrepreneurial route. They choose a route where they're creating their own, you know, income. They're taking a lot more risk and they're going out on their own path. So after that, I actually decided, I was like, wow, like I started to reevaluate, like is school for me? Like, is this the right decision I need to make? Should I go down this path? Um, and another thing I realized is that I'm also the type of person that doesn't like authority too much. So I'm like, okay, if I'm going to go to school for the next 10, 12, 15 years, go through residency programs and things along okay, those lines. So, so you were, you're 21 years old, but yeah. prior to that, um, you, so you moved out at 18 and mm -hmm. you were in college at that point. So you were like living on campus or? Yeah. So I was in college and I lived on campus for a semester, but then I also lived off campus. Like, gotcha. And you were going yeah. to school for medical mm -hmm. to like Absolutely. become a doctor or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah. that, that's, that's your whole, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, mm -hmm. boom, life changing event occurs during that time. You said you were also working in in mm -hmm. the medical space. Full when time, did it yeah. full time? When did it switch? Because you also said that you were working at a restaurant. So that was at twenty one. Yeah, so twenty one, I was working at a restaurant, um, and then I want to say around like while still in school. Yeah, while still in school, and then like twenty two, twenty three, I actually started working as a in a hospital as a pharmacy technician. Okay, okay. So before that, we get to that, so twenty one, yeah, yeah. boom, you get jumped. This like happened at school, like. Mm -hmm. Like you were targeted or just random? Like, you know, there's yeah. no explanation. So I was actually trying to protect one of my friends. We were at like this fraternity party. One of my friends kind of got into it with another guy. Mm. Six of them ended up coming after us and jumping us. I was essentially took the blunt force of a punch to the jaw. Um, ended up breaking my jaw in two places. So I have two titanium plates <laughs> right there. Wow. Um, went through, uh, I had to go through surgery to get my jaw fixed around $80,000 of surgery. And this was a very tough time for me. Like I really yeah. did not know what I was going to do. Um, there was just so many things going through my mind. I was working minimum wage, supporting myself. Fortunately, the victim's compensation agency of Virginia paid for all of my surgery expenses. So that like was blessing. an amazing blessing. And I look back at that moment and say it's the punch in the face that God knew I needed. I was just about to like, I wanted you to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, life, life literally hit this guy in the face. Like literally yeah. some people need, I think for me it was observing other people go through horrific things. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh no, mm -hmm. I'm never going to allow this happen. Whereas there's people like yourself who actually went through that horrific event mm -hmm. and complete 180. So that was, say that one more time, exactly how you said it. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that was the punch in the face that God knew I needed. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. that's really powerful. So we're 21, you're healing, you've mm -hmm. gone through surgery, multiple surgeries, $80,000. Um, by, by when were you fully healed? It took like a year or two or? So it, t it only, for me to get, I had my jaw fully wired shut. So I was yeah, like. Can't even speak. Liquids. I, I couldn't speak unless I took my rubber bands out, but pretty much I did not have a lot of, you know, wow. I'd be speaking five minutes before I felt like exhausted. So I had my jaw wired shut for about six weeks. Yeah. So about a month and a half. Fortunately, I did heal up, you know, relatively faster. Um, mm -hmm. I very particular about my health. So that, you know, helped keep in shape. Um, but yeah, during that time, like, and again, I think I'm extremely blessed to have gone through this. It really gave me an opportunity to reevaluate re a lot of things. And I took that time I had just to, as like a, almost a sabbatical <laughs> in a sense yeah. to just like, you know, read and learn and be like, okay, like, am I making the right decisions? Um, am I doing the things that it's really going to lead to the life that I ideally want? Um, and a lot of this also came up because I was living on my own. I had to make these decisions for myself. I didn't really have like a, 
a fall back because my parents like really weren't doing well financially, which is yeah. again another another big reason mm-hmm. that you know kind of pushed me towards this direction. So I ended up reading Rich Dad Poor Dad that really started to change my philosophy. Um, and I started reevaluating what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something more entrepreneurial. I wanted to you know get into business for myself. But the big thing for me, and I think this is so important for anyone that's you know potentially considering the financial industry or any other type of entrepreneurial endeavor, is I realized the importance of chasing impact rather than income. So a lot of people get into various spaces because they're like, hey, like I want to make a big income. I want to you know be able to have the abundance, live that lifestyle. And I realized that like, that is almost a, like, it's a very finite mindset because like, if you're just chasing income, you're going to get burnt out at some point in time. Like, it's just, there's just no amount of money that can, you know, suffice for, you know, the stress you'll feel in an industry, all the things that you'll go through. Like, there's just never an amount of money. So I chose, I was like, okay, like I obviously do want to be able to provide for my family. Um, But I also want to have a big impact on the people that I'm working with. And I want to be able to make a change, you know, in my community and hopefully the world as well, too. So um, mid-20s, again, I was like 23, 24 at this time working at a hospital, really starting to, and this happened over the course of time, but really starting to evaluate what I want to do. And in the midst of that, my parents, their health also started to decline a lot. Um, unfortunately, my like I grew up in my parents, my dad had bipolar, my mom had schizophrenia, they never really took care of their health that much over time. So it really started to decline a lot in my mid 20s. Um, so I started to really see the impact, not only of their health declining and what that meant for them, but also them not being able to have the financial resources to take care of themselves in that elder age and in those stages of life. I saw like, all right, like they just weren't able to get get into the best hospitals. They weren't able to receive the best treatment. And seeing that and seeing all the pain that they had to go through and me just being essentially helpless was just, it really like pushed a button. Fire. (laughs) Yeah, it really created a fire in me. I'm like, man, like this is, this is, this sucks. This really sucks. Like, um, and I uh, remember, like, I saw um, my dad unfortunately got diagnosed with terminal cancer when I was like 25, 26. And this was actually right when I was like starting in the financial industry. And yeah, I realized. Yeah. So before, so I just want to mark, yeah, yeah. mark these points for people so they're following along because I think it's super important that we're living in a time where social media is giving us the impression that whoever we're mm-hmm. listening to has been successful since day one. And so I'm, yeah. looking to, I'm looking to document stories here where I'm like, look, this guy started at 18, you know, we're going to school, the life-changing event occurred at 21. So whatever your decision-making process was prior to 21, mm-hmm. just did a complete switch. So from, mm-hmm. from after that moment of jaw being wired shut and now you're forced to use these ears more and yeah, yeah. and read with our eyes and listen to the word of god and how he's working on us in this challenging time to then make that decision of chasing impact over income that came after 21 so that's that's mm-hmm. very important that those of you that are watching that we see this paradigm occur where it's life-changing event everyone has it you have to define where that occurred From that point is where we start counting in terms Mm -hmm. of how we're going to shift our life. And then now we start to see the compounding effect of, Mm -hmm. I just had this life-changing event. I now find this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Paradigm Shift. So life-changing event, paradigm shift, decision-making process changes. He says, chase impact over income. While that's going on, you're now in the season of additional disappointing things starting to occur. Just as you're finding that good thing that's gonna change your life. Boom, 23, 24, parents' health starts to decline. And at 25, dad is diagnosed with terminal cancer, correct? Mm-hmm. So continue from where, where you was about to say, now that I have that context here and the, the audience can see that. Absolutely. So at that time when my father was diagnosed with terminal cancer, it, you know, I, I can't say that it wasn't something that I didn't see coming just because of his health, but of course it was like a major, major shocker. Major blow. Um, yeah, major blow. Like I, 
I did not have the ability to in any way care for him um, with his hospital, his, his bills, his health wise. I just didn't have the capacity to do so. So I was really just powerless. And when you are faced with that, like for anyone dealing with someone that you truly care about, it's very like, for me, I was just like, all right, I don't want anyone I ever care about to ever have to go through this again. And me be in the same position where I can't do anything to help them out, but watch. Yeah. So um, in the midst of this, I realized like, hey, like, all right, if he had had the right financial tools, we could have had a much different outcome. We may have been prepared um, to make sure that he had the assets available to provide for himself health wise. Um, he would have had like life insurance in place. Like there's all these different things like wills, trust, all this stuff that like I had no knowledge of that he didn't have prepared for him. So I had to start really, for me, I was like, okay, all this stuff I don't really know about. I'm going to start learning about a lot of it so that I can prepare myself and prepare the people that I care about so they can be in a better position. So that's really like, a, like it starts to just motivate me to increase my own financial literacy and start learning on my own. So in the midst of this, like whenever I start learning things, I just love to share them because I think that, you know, knowledge should be free <laughs> at the end of the day. People should have that knowledge available to empower themselves and better their lives. So I started to share different things like, hey, like I remember talking to a friend and I was like, you should start investing. You should, you know, make sure you get some insurance while you're young and healthy. You should start putting together wills, these things. You just never know and you want to be prepared for yourself long term. So I remember in the midst of a conversation of her, she was like, wow, like this stuff is like really great. You're talking about a lot of stuff that my financial advisor talks to me about. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, huh? Because you, cause at this point, you're 25. You don't have anything yet. You're not licensed. You're, you're still reading. You're still mm -hmm. working. And you're still in school, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So all these things are still going on. And would you say like you're paycheck to paycheck or you're kind of like, you know, saving some money or investing some money? And yeah. So I, had, I did start like investing when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad a couple years before. Gotcha. Um, so like, I mean, I would take 10, 15 percent of my paycheck. I set up like, you know, Vanguard fund, Roth IRA, and I was just, you know, throwing some money into there. I was just like, whatever NC I could level do. stuff. Right. OK. Yeah. Cool. And at the time, I was making like 30000 35000 a year. Really wasn't making much, but I was like, hey, I'm just going to take a couple hundred dollars where I can and throw it away. You gotcha. know, put it away from down the road. All right. So, so back to the financial advisor, right? That's where you left off. Yeah. So I started having a conversation with her about all these different things. And she was like, hey, like you should go talk to my financial advisor. And this kind of, I was like, like financial advisor, what is that? Because where I grew up, we didn't have financial advisors. They didn't. They didn't come to our side of town. <laughs> they just. We just. We, I didn't know about that as a career option or as a career space. So I was like, yeah, I'm always open to understanding and learning more, especially for someone that's a professional and knows, you know, these various aspects. So I went to go have a meeting with him, and I was a huge nerd. So like, I brought this little notebook, and I was like. What's an ETF? What's a bond? What's the difference between term and permanent life insurance? You know, I just want to learn all this stuff, right? Um, so he saw my intellectual curiosity. Um, I also had told him that, like, hey, like, I want to consider different career options outside of the medical field, still kind of figuring out what to do, where to go. And so um, I had that meeting with him. I, we had agreed that we were going to get back together in like a couple months to start actually implementing some strategies. Um, and I guess in the midst of that time, he saw the fact that I had a lot of intellectual curiosity and, you know, I was pretty good with people. You know, I love talking to people. I love developing relationships. So he talked to his uh, district director and they ended up reaching out to me and saying, hey, like, you know, we're in the midst of building up our firm and this advisor had a lot of great things to say about you. He told me that you're in the midst of changing careers, we want to have you come in and see if this could be a potential good fit, right? Um, and five interviews <laughs> later, um, I got ended up offering a full time position, you know, at my last firm. So that's how I actually just got into the industry. It was weird because again, like I 25, 25 years old now or twenty six. Yeah. Okay. 25, I want to say 25 going on like 26. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. a couple of different interviews and you got offered a full-time position to work there. Did it require a license for that job or? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I did have cover to cover it or you have to come out of pocket? I believe I had to come out of pocket and I just had to get my uh, life and health insurance license at first. So that was the first license that I acquired, state life and health, relatively cheap to yeah. get. Like that was a perfect I guess. Like that. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, super cheap. So that's how I really got into the industry. I started to, you know, um, get into finance and all those different aspects there. And um, so that was uh, around like December, like 2019. Um, and so in the course of that time, I was also like taking care of my father as well too, because he still had that terminal cancer diagnosis. So it was also the midst of COVID, all these different things. So did you move back with, dad to stay close to him or were you still living on your own at this point i was still living on my own but fortunately my parents were in the same city as i was so i was able to you know pretty close okay yeah get connected with them there you know we we're all in richmond together um so about three to four months in i want to say it was yeah three to four months into my career my dad ended up passing away mm. from terminal cancer um and this was, I mean, extremely tough. Like I was starting a practice. I was getting into an area that I know was relatively new for me. Um, and then COVID was starting and I also had my you know, father pass away. So a lot of things again were happening, you know, all at once. Um, so during that time though, I really start to, that's when like I really start to truly grasp and like see the results of what a lack of planning was. Um, and he passed away, unfortunately, did not have any type of, didn't have really anything. Like we were able to put together a will for him, you know, on Rocket Lawyer, like right before. But like outside of that, there really wasn't, you know, much left uh, outside of his social security. So I started to see what it was like to pass off debt instead of wealth. And that left a huge mark you know, on me. And I realized that like, you know, with all the things that I went through, you know, my mission that God gave me was to make sure that no one passes off debt instead of wealth. So that conviction truly like was what led me to continue to really be committed and consistent, you know, those first couple years in my career and, you know, allow me to reach the success I did. And I can say that like, even with all these things happening, like it wasn't immediate whatsoever. Like it was still a tough track. It was still very difficult. And for the first six to seven months in my career, I really didn't, you know, make much money. Like I really didn't do well. Fortunately, I had planned, you know, I had six months at least of uh, emergency expenses. I was good, you know, from a financial standpoint, I, you know, prepared to go into the, you know, an entrepreneurial career. And that's something that I, recommend for everyone if you're going to go into an endeavor where it's you're starting your own yep. business or you are you know going into finance where you're just working off the clients that you uh, retain prepare yourself financially like and that's like anything like you want to make sure that you are oftentimes people are looking at okay this is best case scenario i'm going to be good but what is worst case scenario right you know let's make sure that you're going to be able to weather the storm you know yeah, because when, when you say full-time position, just so that everyone understands, you weren't necessarily being paid like an hourly or, or salary. This is, this is you mm -hmm. had to go and get your life insurance license, life and annuity, so 214, 215, right? And that mm -hmm. costs, you know, a couple dollars is not too much, but it is about 40 to 60 hours of, of training, and then you got to take the state test and all this stuff. And then there's a, a, a really nice learning curve. You got to learn mm -hmm. about these different products and different offers and how to present and how to talk and follow up and call and email yeah. and nurture. And so you're, you're literally learning how to build a entire business or that whole analogy that people use about, you know, you're, you're built, you're building a plane while it's in the air, right? It's exactly. like that, that whole concept is very, very real. So being able to have, like you said, about three to six months worth of expenses to really cover those first initial months. And even then I would argue you probably need a little bit, a little bit more, or I usually recommend people to keep their job mm -hmm. while you're in that learning curve, getting your license, getting the education, building up a lead flow, whether you're going to start some social media to 
attract, you know, an audience, leads, that kind of a thing. So those two components is, you know, keep your job. Don't just quit your six-figure job or your high five-figure job and become a life insurance agent and make millions of dollars like the gurus do, right? Uh, yeah, have, yeah. Have this protection and you've got a couple of years on your belt of studying finance so you're and you were investing like you said 15 percent of your income i'm assuming mm -hmm. you're you know managing your money you're budgeting and mm -hmm. you're spending less than what you make so you're developing mm -hmm. all these principles in all of these adversities right I, so far i count about four major life-changing events here which is you know starting really at or we could count really moving out as a life-changing experience as well so that's one but then it's the um the, the knock in the face, right, at that party mm -hmm. and then having to go through the surgery. That's a major life-changing event. Then it's seeing our, our parents, both mom and dad, correct? Their health mm -hmm. declining. Mm -hmm. And then third, boom, now we got a diagnosis. And then about a, a year later or so, boom, dad passes away. Another major changing event. And just to throw on top of all that mess, the whole world shuts down shortly yeah. after, right? Mm -hmm. So now you got <laughs> now as a life insurance agent, right? And and mind you, this is this is insane because all of and when I say all, for those that are watching, all of the training had to do with door knocking, right? Mm -hmm. In person, if I'm going to mm -hmm. present life insurance, I have to be at the kitchen table at their mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe over the phone. But prior to COVID, it was all about in person meeting, mm -hmm. driving to appointments or knocking on doors, making cold calls, setting up appointments, like barely anybody knew how to use Zoom at the time, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're talking about a major shift and now a new learning curve that you have to pick up, right? Mm -hmm. And let me ask you, were you already creating content? Because I know you have a social media following now, mm -hmm. but were you creating content prior to COVID? I was creating some content here and there. I wasn't like extremely like on top of it. And yeah, it was so more by no really, means were you an expert, even though you're young, like, no, 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 no yeah, like, yeah. Like, it was all this stuff <laughs> development here and there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> cool. All right. This is in intense and I think it's very real. And I know that there's people watching that are going through the same thing, whether you guys are watching may maybe young around this, this same age or maybe older and you have different kinds of experiences, but know that it's that paradigm shift and it's that decision-making process that Coffee here really implemented, which is from the beginning, chasing impact over income and then managing the money that you do make, being a better mm -hmm. steward over it, which really helped with, the, with dad passing away, COVID and getting into this new industry. So like you said, first three to six months, you really weren't making any income, right? Maybe a sell or two. Yeah. Yeah, like maybe I think I maybe, I want to say t ten to fifteen thousand in, in the first six year, months, first six seven months. months. Yeah, yeah first six months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so, yeah, so, so continue. So we're, we're twenty six now. It's twenty twenty. It's COVID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now what's going on? So um, at this point, like I again, I didn't really do well in the financial industry. And one thing that I do want to mention you know, for those people out there that are, uh, you know, starting any types of endeavors like this, going out on their own, is I was very cognizant of like my cash flow, my income and my expenses during this time period. Like I was, I think my expenses per month were maybe around like, I want to say at like $1,200. Like my, my rent was like 580, obviously food, you know, Fortunately, I didn't have a family that was dependent on me, so I was able to keep my expenses really, you know, really low. Packing my lunch, doing all the things, so I was able to like really, you know, make sure there was a gap, you know, of my income, my expenses, and not, you know, going out there, you know, doing things. So I think that's very important, like especially as you start a business. Yeah. To so let me ask you this: during this whole entire time, mm -hmm. what was what was some mindset? or a quote or an affirmation like what was your system of not allowing these life-changing horrific events to bleed over into mm -hmm. how you operate your budget and your finances because i work with a lot of um, husbands wives moms dads people that are in their 40s 50s 60s that they they don't know how to separate how they operate their finances in the midst of crisis 
where it's like if they're dealing with a health crisis for some reason their finance they completely ignore it where it seems like yeah. in your case you were able to not let these events bleed over into your finance despite you getting educated because i have this is specific specifically talking to people who are financially literate they make good money they're they were saving and investing and doing all these things and then life hits them and all of a sudden everything falls apart like they they become financially illiterate again so mm -hmm. is there anything in particular you could give that really helped you like separate that because that's unique I, for myself i did the same thing I, I didn't i never let my life situation bleed over into my finance and i feel like that's a skill in and of itself that i haven't been able to define but if you have anything before we move on I, i'd like you to just touch on that a little bit yeah absolutely so i believe you know everything first starts with like you know preparation like if you fail to plan you'll plan to fail okay. and it's so important to you know, as I alluded to before, make sure that you're preparing for like, you know, worst case scenarios, um, you know, thinking through those things, you know, what am I going to have to deal with? What type of expenses may come up? And let me make sure that I have the optionality to make adjustments, you know, as needed. Because sometimes those big expenses come up, we can't plan for. Sometimes there's just some necessities um, that we have to, you uh, you know, pay for that we didn't before, right? Um, so one like mindset um, that I had, or one piece of my mindset was really like almost like one of my friends calls this going scorched earth. <laughs> um, and you're really saying, all right, like what is a necessity and what is a luxury in my life? Oftentimes, especially as we continue to make more income, we have increased, we just naturally will have lifestyle inflation. We make more, we spend more, we make more, we spend more. Yep. And the thing that were luxuries, maybe that's going out to your favorite restaurants, you know, having, you know, your nightly glass of wine, like, you know, that club membership, whatever it is, like all those different things we start to see as, all right, this, I needed to live. Right. <laughs> um, but the reality is, is like, okay, you do need a place to live. You do need food on the table. You do need gas to get from place to place. Um, obviously pay for your bills, insurances, but like outside of those things, those fixed costs, a lot of that, all those stuff is just discretionary expenses. It's just really luxuries that we have. So really being like very real with myself and saying, all right, like, what do I need and what do I not need? Like, what like will truly impact my life if I don't have and what can I live without for maybe a few weeks or maybe a few months if necessary. So that comes from, you know, being intentional prior to those things happening. So, you know, when you're in those good spaces, like when you're in a good place financially, things are going well, take time to see, all right, what are my discretionary expenses? What are my fixed expenses? So if needed, you can say, hey, like I can come out, cut out some of these for this time period from what is you know necessary. And for me, like what was fixed was again, those expenses that I listed and then also my investing. I was like, hey, like I, the, if out of everything, the investing is the last thing I'm gonna cut. <laughs> like I, I'll cut out the, you know, going out to eat, I'll cut out these other things, but this is a necessity for me because this is providing for my future. Um, the second thing was a principle that I got from um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And he talks about the circle of concern and your circle of influence. So he says that most people have a circle of concern that is much wider than their circle of influence, meaning that they oftentimes are concerning themselves or spend their time and energy on all these things that they really don't have an influence over. They don't really have power over. They can't really do anything about these things will happen. You can talk about it, but like you can't really impact it. But he talks about how the most effective people have a circle of influence that's ideally the same size or bigger than their circle of concern. So that means they're really only going to concern themselves or put their time and energy in the things they can actually change and impact. So I can't change the tragedies that happen in my life. I can't change how the market is doing. I can't change what's going on 
um, in the government in another you know country. But what I do have control over are my financial habits, the things I choose to spend my time and energy on, how much time and energy I put into my work and my own personal development, and all those aspects. So while these things were going on, it was tough. It took a lot of emotional energy. But I always kind of recentered and said, all right, what are the things I can really control and impact? Um, especially while I was building my practice, I was like, okay, I can control how many people I reach out to. I can control the impact that I have on my clients so I can leave a good impression on them. Um, I can't control necessarily, you know, my dad, unfortunately, getting diagnosed with cancer and then passing away or COVID. So I'm just going to focus on those things that are really in, inside that circle of influence. So that was extremely helpful. And like there are many times in life where you'll have to just kind of buckle down and really, you know, focus on those things. Um, and it's important to be able to do so. So you can really be conscious of where your time and energy is going. Um, and then a third, you know, principle that I, I live by, um, this is from Jim Rohn, but he says, you know, if you want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't want to do something, you'll find an excuse. Oh. And that is so real. Like I, I find that in my own life, I find that in all my clients' lives. It's you know every t- it happens to everybody, right? And I realize that like okay, I have excuses. Excuses are abundant. <laughs> They're always abundant in every situation that you go through. There's all you could always find a reason, you know, why you won't or can't do something. Yeah. Or you can find a reason why you can do something. You know, focusing on the opportunity, focusing on the things that are going well. And saying, hey, like, yeah, all these different factors may be against me, but I'm still going to find a way to make this happen. So I really focused on, again, the things I can control and really focusing on instead of, you know, what can go wrong, how I can get this done and what can go right. And through the midst of this, like, obviously I, or not obviously, but like I made sure that I, you know, took in a lot of positive information, you know, whether it be like, uh, people in the personal development space, you know, different people I could look up to to continue to reinforce a good mindset because, like, you are a product of what you take in and what you consume. So I think it's so important, especially if you are going through a tough time in life, to be like listening to more positive, optimistic things. Of course, we got to deal with the real stuff <laughs> and yeah. not ignore that. But if I'm going to choose to, take in any information while I'm going through something tough. I'm going to take in information that's saying, hey, you're strong enough to be able to do this. You have that power within you and you know you have God inside you and he is looking out for you, you know, even though things are going wrong. So those are the principles that I really, really allowed me to you know, that's go huge. through a lot of tough times. Yeah. That's huge. Thank you for sharing that. I actually just put it on the board here for those uh, that are, are listening here and want to take notes that, you know, coffee here is chasing impact over income have three to six months worth of expenses, prepare for worst case scenarios, which is a healthy dose of being paranoid, I would say, Mm -hmm. but then also very optimistic, chasing impact over income. That's more of a, uh, my fiance calls it delusional faith. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, her and I have been reading and listening to the word and really learning more, more together. And when we look at major characters in the Bible, they all share this this characteristic of delusional ridiculous unmeasurable faith where Mm -hmm. where it's like that statement choosing impact over income technically doesn't make financial sense Mm -hmm. because you can't measure impact in terms of of, in terms of where you're currently at in your crisis state of mind you're looking for where can i make the most money right now to pay my bills Mm -hmm. right And, Mm -hmm. and, and get out of this situation so logically that makes more sense let me take the $18 an hour job over the $12 an hour job because I'm going to have more money. Um, so you're, it's a, a healthy balance between being paranoid. Hey, prepare for the worst case. As you're chasing your dream, impact over income, chasing your purpose, you're also saying, let's prepare for the worst case scenario here by having three to six months worth of expenses and you know, still saving and we're still investing money. Then we take it to more practical again, which is being intentional with your needs versus wants. And then the whole circle of concern versus circle of influence, you want your circle of concern to match with your circle of influence, not not the other way around where the concern is much bigger than what you can influence, right? Absolutely. That's the biggest takeaway there. And then there was the, the principle with Jim Rohn 
regarding how you know we can we can make excuses for things we don't want to do and if there are things that we do want to do in this world we're going to figure out a way to make that happen and there's a lady that um she had wrote a book i forgot her name but she's pretty popular and i think the name of her book was everything is figure outable i was like so yeah 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 i'm talking about i i do know what you're talking about and uh the name is is slipping my mind um but yeah she said everything is figure outable so like i'm I'm sure someone in the comments will will drop their name she's (laughs) huge in 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 the space and i've heard her talk and when she said everything's figure outable i'm like Oh, figure out of, oh, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's very real. Like, in no matter what horrific life changing situation you're in, your crisis mode, and that is the way that we get to living our best life at our highest potential is God puts us through these hard things. And He's very intentional with it because mm-hmm. anything God ordained or allowed to happen in your life is because He knows you you can handle it exactly you have the capacity to handle but there's also the the potential that you will give up and you will Mm -hmm. not do it but that didn't mean that you couldn't do it that just means you quit you just gave up but Mm -hmm. internally you have the potential to actually overcome that horrific horrific event or a multitude of obstacles and challenges like in your particular situation so let's i think we're about to approach the land of good news now and and Mm -hmm higher progress because we're now 26 years old it's where we're in we're in COVID season now you're you're fully licensed life and health right Mm -hmm. did you get your financial advisor's license as well in that time yeah so um around seven months into the career so i started in december 2019 i want to say like july 2020 that's when i attained my securities licenses so um which enabled me to do more comprehensive planning, um, work with like mutual funds, um, investments and things like that for my clients as well too. Okay, and at this point, how are you acquiring leads and marketing? How are you acquiring business at this point, middle of, of COVID? literally the market has fully tanked at this point i believe like markets are 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 way down yeah and people are losing their jobs people are getting laid off left and right Mm -hmm. yeah so so this is where i feel that you know because of my focus on impact versus income was really able to help me out towards that tail end of that first year so i really didn't you know again make much uh during the first six months but I was always like really looking to like help people. So, you know, whether it be like, you know, I was, you know, at first I was just reaching out to contacts, people in my close circle that I knew. Um, if someone, you know, wasn't in the right space to start working together, I would send over a budget sheet to them or, you know, I'd educate them a little bit about how much they should be saving, just like giving knowledge like here and there. So, you know, I really focused on like making sure I was building relationships long-term and leaving those good impressions on people. So like, you know, whether it be, again, six months down the road, um, I could reach out to them again and say, hey, like, is this the be- be- better time for you? Or do you know anybody that can potentially uh, benefit from this? So um, right around like, you know, July, uh, August of uh, 2020, that's when I actually started to getting some traction. Um, and it was because of all that work I had done prior. Um, and when I started, like, we had like, you know, goals of like how many people you should reach out to, all these different, you know, metrics we should be paying attention to. Right. And another, uh, you know, mentality that I had was like, if I do like more than I'm expected to do, I'm going to give myself the lowest probability of failure. <laughs> and I already knew that it, this career had a very high rate of failure. Like, I, I believe at my company, it was around 85%. Yeah, I think industry wise, like 80, 90% fail as yeah. under in life insurance. I yeah. think it's the same with real estate agents as well. Like it's mm-hmm. a very, very high failure rate because you're, we're so programmed to the paycheck mindset, mm-hmm. right? And now you're switching to this is all performance based. Mm-hmm. So whoever provides the most value goes above and beyond what you would normally get paid per hour. Like when I was working in a kitchen in food and beverage, like if if I didn't wash 
all the dishes within a certain time frame, I'm still getting paid the same dollar amount. Or if I didn't get the food out slower, I'm still getting paid the same dollar amount. Or, or the way I clean the whole entire kitchen, still getting paid the same dollar amount. So mm -hmm. some people look at it, well, what's the least amount of work I can do yeah. to get paid that <laughs> dollar an hour versus very few of us think, what's the most amount of work I can get done within the time frame I have of my 40, 50 hour work schedule. And if I outperform everyone around me, it's, it's inevitable for me to be noticed mm -hmm. by upper management bosses. It's, it's only a matter of time before I start to see success because I am being successful in the work production that I put out to the world, whether whether no one sees it or just one person sees it, like or nobody sees it, but God sees it, and then He can work in other people's hearts to cause eyeballs to focus on, mm -hmm. hey, this person's really providing an unreasonable amount of hospitality. And I feel Absolutely. like that's that's what you were doing. You were providing a crazy amount of value and hospitality. So we're now in towards the tail end of 2020 and mm -hmm. you're starting to build some traction here. You're acquiring leads via word of mouth and referrals, but still Absolutely. not still not social media yet, right? Not, not no, so not social media at the time. Like I cool. I had built up, you know, because again, I, I was making some content here and there. So I built up a bit of like a reputation of just, you know, like I was doing workout stuff. I was like, this guy is a hard worker. I was also, you know, every once in a while talking about lessons I learned from books and podcasts. So people really started to see like my character, you know, on like my social media and who I was. Um, so that helped. Um, but I really didn't like, I wasn't like doing like a lot of content. Um, so really just like organically, like relationships that I had, um, reaching out to people that I knew, um, and, you know, just going back through like groups and organizations I was a part of and really just reaching out to everyone. Cause you know, I really like one thing that I realized is like important for, um, any entrepreneurial endeavor, um, especially in finance, uh, but really any space is I had this mentality that there was like no plan B. Um, and I really was like, Hey, like this is, you know, what I'm, faith. yeah, <laughs> but, um, this is what I've been called to do. And this is going to work out. <laughs> like, it, like, I really just, I had to have that mentality about it. And like, you know, I think it is appropriate for like some people to transition into a space like this and, you know, keep like a part time or full time job to make sure they can cover expenses, especially, you know, if you are taking care of others or other people who are financially dependent, you know, it's important to be responsible. Um, but you like, I believe that mentality of like saying, hey, like there's no plan B and like saying, all right, after, you know, if you're working a job after six months to a year, year and a half, you set yourself a deadline to be able to be in this space fully is so important because that like lack of optionality, that's what like made me work those 60 to 80 hour weeks to <laughs> kickstart everything I was doing. And um, by the time I got to December of 2020, that's when things really like picked up for me. And that month, I ended up making as much in that month that I made my entire year salary at my last. So that was the 10k plus month, or was that a? That was a that was a 30k plus month. Right, because you were making 30k a year back then, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you did a 30k month in December of 2020. At that point, what's going through your mind? At that point, like. Things definitely changed. <laughs> you're just, you're just like, teasing everywhere you go, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. just like I like I like it was because I mean this was months in the making. I you yeah. know I started no no years in the making. Two, yeah, years, years in the making. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So it like it really flipped my world upside down. Like I I mean it can one it, it completely redefines how I thought about finances. You know, just one like. You know, I realized that like we are often the determining factor at the end of the day through our actions, our habits, the spaces we're in um, of how much income that we can make. And I also realized that if we, by focusing on like what value I was able to deliver to people, just helping people out, that's what enabled me to essentially, you know, create the connections and connect with the clients that were able to, I was able to work with that allow me to have that, you know, amazing month, 
you know, in this practice. So, you know, if I had any doubt of me in this career, it all vanished. All uh, vanished and, right then and there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like I was, and like, it really, I mean, it, it's completely changed like my lifestyle, my mindset, um, but more so like, you know, even looking back at things now, and there's so much more in between them, but like, I was able to make such an impact on so many people that I work with. And, you know, of course that income was absolutely amazing, but I'm actually not really, I am, obviously I do, you know, I like abundance. I like, you know, making big income, but I'm actually not very money motivated. I'm, what was more satisfying to me was like, you know, having clients reach out and be like, wow, like, thank you for explaining this stuff to me. You've changed my life. Like now I'm able to provide generational wealth to my children. Now I actually have a plan for the future. And all those, you know, different people that um, were, their lives were changed, their outcomes were changed. And I knew that they wouldn't go down the same path that my father did. That was just so special, you know, for me and so fulfilling. Yeah. I want to read yeah. something to you because I think this this fires you up more than making a, a 30k month and say more consistency with that we'll, we'll get into it but i know we're both motivated the same way where it's we're in an industry where it's all about money mm -hmm. and it's all about investing in compound interest and risk mitigation and tax reduction mm -hmm. it's all money topics yet we didn't get into it for the money we got into it for the transformational impact it will have on our lives and mm -hmm. how we can be an example to others to help transform their lives and let me know if this right here gives yeah. you like that right there if if i just got those consistently on a monthly basis that's going to fire me up to really keep it moving so this is a, a message from a, a client of mine. His name's Jim. So sh shout out to Jim. He messaged me on October 3rd. This is this year. So 2023, October 3rd. And we're recording. It's October 6th now. And he says, hello, Denzel. I want to I be there uh, virtually for um, an event that I'm putting together. And he says, I want to share some good news. As of last month, I'm debt free. In October of 2020 is when we started working together. So three years later, mm. now officially debt free. He's like, I started my velocity banking journey with you at about two hundred twenty thousand plus in debt, mostly mortgage. And then he, you know, he was chunking, and then he had he got obtained the first position, home equity line of credit, and then started a life insurance policy, a high cash value life insurance policy in twenty twenty one. So a whole life. And he's like, I, he's like, I got a new roof and a new truck and. You know, I'm doing all these things. Um, he says, you are making a, a huge difference in people's lives. Thank you for starting to make videos in front of your window to get better light. So this guy had been following me since 2018 when I first started <laughs> creating YouTube videos. And yeah. those, that are, those that are loyal subscribers of mine and followers, or if you're brand new, you just scroll all the way to the bottom of my YouTube channel and you're gonna see me standing like right near a window that you can see like that's a window and yeah. there's no, there's no <laughs> light. There's no light in my room because I didn't have a light. I didn't, ha I literally didn't have like a, a, a light in my room. So I was always using the, the light. I didn't have like fancy lights that I have now. I was literally broke, negative cash flow, didn't have a job. And I'm out here making videos, showing people how I can help them get out of debt. Even though mm. I'm in, I'm in like $30,000 of debt with no job and no income stream. Yet mm. here I am trying to help others get out of debt. Right. And it's like mm. that, that, paradigm so does that fire you up for, for yourself Dude, I love, get stuff like I that? love, yeah. I love hearing that I, figured, and it's, I, I, I think that's it's so amazing when you're able to like you know shift that focus because it's very difficult like if you're in a place where like you're not living in abundance to go out there and say all right i'm going to focus on others you know yeah. i'm going to see how i can you know serve others how i can you know make someone's else's you know situation better it takes a very like strong courageous um person to do that so i want to acknowledge you man for being in that space <laughs> and still saying hey like I i'm focused on like who can i go out there and help like mm -hmm. i may be not in the place that i ideally want to be but i'm still focused on how i can get other people to the position they want to be as well too so that's yeah. awesome which also i think is very motivating for young people like us that don't mm -hmm. have a whole lot of experience but want to enter into an industry that is very serious 
that mm-hmm. does require knowledge and wisdom and experience over a long period of time. It does require that, but know that you don't need it to start getting into it. You don't need all that experience, knowledge, and wisdom to start serving, right? You, Absolutely. You start small and scale and build from there. So that's just a, a prime example of, yeah, I don't know everything, but I know this one component that could help someone out there that could use that and then because of that exchange of value, that's gonna help me increase my learning potential. And you keep you know, creating the, the stepping stones, yeah. the compounding result there. So December, 2020, you make 30 grand. So now going into 2021, mm-hmm. what was the, like if you wanna share, you can give kind of round numbers really? here in terms of what you were able to generate in 2021 and what particular products were you providing in the financial services space? Life insurance being one of them, Mm -hmm. right? Because that's already a giveaway. Um, But if you want to expand on that. Yeah, absolutely. So I was providing life insurance, um, things like disability insurance as well too, um, a lot of mutual fund products for my clients um, as well. So, um, and then also advisory, you know, like fully managed portfolios of things like ETFs in, in there as well. So during that, uh, and that was like technically my first full year in the industry because I actually like became a full-time employee like January 2nd, 2019. So that was technically like my first full year I'm in the industry. And yeah, that year uh, was really like my big year. Like I um, started you know, really to do a lot of work on my own. Like in the beginning, I was doing a lot of work for other advisors, just kind of learning the ropes and things, started really transitioning to my doing my own work. And that year, um, the year prior, I think I made around like 60,000. That year, 2020. Okay. Yeah. And in 2021, I made closer to around like 110,000, I believe. Nice. Yeah. So. And then 2022? Mm-hmm. Uh, 2022, I made about 130. And then yeah. now we're in uh, 2023. Mm-hmm. How are, are you on track yeah. to hit your, what's your goal revenue that you set out to hit at the, at the beginning of the year? And are you, do you feel like you're on track? Because we still have mm-hmm. plenty of time to go here. And yeah. the weird thing about what, what we do, it's like there's usually a, a, about a one to two month gap where you're servicing the client and then when they actually close and then you get paid. So sometimes mm-hmm. we're getting sometimes we're getting paid business from three, four months ago mm-hmm. that can kind of roll into one big kind of payout. So sometimes that kind of you know happens depending on where your cycle is. So that's just giving you context for those that are listening that plan on getting in the finance space. It can be very weird in terms of how you get paid. There's no you don't really know how much you'll get paid because there's not true consistency in it, especially mm-hmm. if you're providing yeah. a financial product that can typically, you know, whether it's life insurance, annuities, mutual funds, investment funds. Um, well, I think those are probably faster with the investment management funds, but life, annuities, and what else takes a little while? Yeah, uh, disability. Like disability. anything disability. requires that underwriting. Like underwriting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can take one to two months for approval uh, to, to go through. So if you spoke to mm-hmm. the 50 people two, three months back. Now you're, if you continue with the same numbers, then you start to see a bit of a flow start to occur. Absolutely. But in the beginning, it's going to be wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, fast forward. it's, it's, it's 2023, right? It's October. Where, what was your goal revenue and, and are you on track? Yeah. So my goal for revenue this year was about 200,000. Um, and so this year I actually had a transition because I left my previous firm and I started my own company, Zion Capital Management Okay. okay. Um, year, this year. So this year um, did have like a lot of obviously building websites, marketing, a lot of time outside of the business. Um, also spoke at quite a few events. That's where, you know, we met, yeah. we met down in Florida as well. So this year, um, uh, since I'm not going to count what I did in January and February at my last firm, um, but this year starting in February up until now, I've probably put in around 115,000. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and technically you're starting over again because you started a new business. Exactly. So- and you're already at six figures, so 115 k mm-hmm. that's, that's awesome for you. And then so when did the social media, when did you start taking advantage of that? Because when I came across you, 
it was because we were on the same panel for for speakers. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, who's this guy? Right, and I looked you up, and then I saw, oh, he has content, and it looked like you had been producing a steady amount of content, shorts, reels, clips, talking about you know the different things that that you do, mixed with like lifestyle photos. Mm -hmm. so when did that start to really take off, and why? did you consider like yeah. creating content? Like, what made you start doing that? Yeah, great question. So I really started to pick that up more and more as I uh, started in my um, practice. Um, I just started to do like produce like, you know, different things that I'm learning, personal development, because like a really big uh, thing for me, and this kind of goes back to, you know, originally what I mentioned when I had that conversation with that girl that introduced me to the advisors, like whenever I learn something, I just, I love sharing it. <laughs> um, and so like, I'm always diving to new things, uh, especially in the personal development space, um, uh, relationships, finance. So I always just love just being able to share those things. Um, then also when I left and created my, you know, Zion Capital Management at that point, it actually allowed me to do a lot more social media on like finance. So that's when that started picking up and I'm really working on now gearing a lot more of my information towards. And what year is that? Uh, this was this year okay. that like, yeah, yeah, that I started really to do like, you know, I've started to produce more financial content, continuing to rev that up as well too. Um, but yeah, like a huge reason was, as I mentioned, I love sharing things, but also I believe like, I think it's so important for people to, you know, one, be able to see the journey for people. Cause I see like, oftentimes people see like the end result. They see like, you know, oh guy, this guy is, you know, you know, millionaire, he has all this stuff, he has all these things and he's living well. And he probably, you know, cause we see that, we often assume that that's just how it was. We assume that that person had the, silver pile, the silver plate, and they just ended up there. But, you know, like most millionaires in America are self-made, Yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, most people go through the trenches, but like, it's not like a quick turnaround and it's, you know, generally for most people, it's not like an easy thing. So I want to really document like a lot of stuff that was going on in my life and for people also to see like, you know, the character and the things that I am doing on like a daily basis, even outside of my practice, so they can understand like what type of character and habits it takes to be able to create and sustain this stuff. Like, it's not an easy journey. Like you, you know, oftentimes I feel like people discount the importance of like things like consistency, you know, integrity, you know, paying attention to the things you're consuming, like, all these different like aspects that really allow someone to have the things in life. Like there's, there's this big thing I follow, like be, do, have. Like oftentimes people wanna have the thing in life. They wanna have the car, they wanna have the house, they wanna have the income, but they don't realize that you have to do the things that are required to have that. And in order to do that stuff, you have to become the person that's able to do those things. So it first starts with becoming the person. Like I always say that like, you know, um, wealth is created in the mind first. Mm -hmm. And if you're not focusing on your mindset, focusing on those things that are um, more unseen, it's very difficult to create the stuff on the, at the end of the place. Uh, and so, yeah, for me, like allowing people to see, hey, like what am I doing outside of, you know, my practice? Who am I as a person? Um, not only for my clients to see like, you know, I am a very disciplined person. I'm the type of person that I do try to, you know, continue to improve myself spiritually, emotionally, mentally, financially, and physically. Um, and then other people, so they can see like, hey, like at the end of the day, I'm just a normal guy. I'm just doing these things that allow me to be successful. There's nothing special. Like I, like I always say, like, even when I was in school, like I was not the smartest, wasn't the fastest, definitely wasn't the tallest. <laughs> um, so I like there weren't a lot of things I was like just naturally given, but like I always had this mindset like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna work hard. Like if someone's gonna put in four hours of work, I'm gonna put in eight. Someone's gonna put in eight, I'm gonna put in twelve. And I'm just gonna really just, you know, become almost uh, you know, get this tunnel vision and like become obsessed with what I need to do in order to be successful. Again, focusing on that circle of influence. What are the things I can influence? This is where I'm going to focus, and I'm going to, you know, work so hard that I almost can't fail. <laughs> In that regard, yeah, absolutely. So, so, 
you start creating content in 2023 with the mm -hmm. intention of just simply, this is your words. You just love sharing things. So it has yeah. nothing to do. And this is interesting because I, I really like to pay attention to what people say when I ask them a question, especially business owners, mm -hmm. as to what was your reasoning behind it. I know when I started creating content, I was influenced by people around me when so many, it was a combination of strangers mm -hmm. and people that know me that kept saying, you have a really good voice. You should, yeah. you should talk, mm -hmm. you got like a radio voice or, you know, I, I could see you being on video and just like talking. I don't know about what, mm -hmm. but just like talking. And I'm like, I'm like, what do I do with that? Right. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, they're saying this and I like to talk about finance. I, I enjoy the topic of finance. It came together and I also had the same intention of chasing impact over income, although I was in a very bad financial situation. I needed to make money in order to pay bills and things like that. So when I, when I started my YouTube channel, I had no job, so I had got fired at my, at my job and then boom, mm -hmm. just started, started creating content shortly after. So there was mm -hmm. a, there was a bit of desperation and motivation, but I had put that, I like tried to bury that and pack it with servant leadership. How can I just serve as many people as I possibly can? What's the most efficient way for me to serve people? Let me go online. Let me create content because all these people around me was saying that I have a good voice and I should, I should do this. And I know one of the biggest difficulties, challenges I had was selling, like actually presenting and mm -hmm. selling to people. Yeah, same and here. I was like, well, <laughs> let, me just, let me just stop selling and start serving, right? Yeah. And that's when the, the paradigm shift occurred. So for, for you, you were, you were doing basically word of mouth referral, like in-person presentations or over the phone, and then just kind of building your, your Rolodex off of that, the very classic, classic way, which mm -hmm. proves that it works even in a COVID environment Absolutely. because your, your biggest earning years are during COVID mm -hmm. which, like, wow, incredible. And we're young and we lack experience and wisdom and, and, and years of credibility. Mm -hmm. We lack all this. You, you lack social proof and influence because you don't have a, a following in 2020 and 2021. Yet those are your biggest revenue months. So now that you're starting in 2023 with the intent of just, look, I just love to share things that I'm learning, personal development and finance information. And, mm -hmm. I, and I bet if, we, if you were to keep that, uh, your social media would, would literally blow up in no time, being that you don't have to do it for the money. You're already generating a nice stream of income right now. And that yeah. just kind of fortifies your conviction and it creates more confidence. Oh my goodness, this is a recipe for dominion. So I'm, I'm excited for you and what you got going on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I want to take it to the whiteboard here so that people can get a recap of, of really like what's going on. And knowing that for, for coffee here, it, it was a six year journey is what I clock from 20s, 21, all the way to about 25, 26. Mm -hmm. We have about four to five major life-changing events. And then God knows how many other nuanced things in between that. That I'm, So I'm pretty sure that number is quadruple in terms of mm -hmm. like obstacles and challenges, like dealing with other members mm -hmm. of your family and and the naysayers and the haters and all that, yeah. all of, all of it. We don't even have to get into that, but we just know like that's in there. And that, so that we got six years and it really wasn't until age 27, right? Is where the, really the money started to flow in. We were like, okay, there's a belief now. Like, like you already had the belief, but now there's proof. Okay, mm -hmm. that work just paid off. If I continue this work and multiply it, it'll, start to compound itself. So 2021, now we're seven years, 27 years old, going on 28. Now we hit six figures. So it takes you six, almost seven years to create six figures of income. I think that is a more, that's so real to me versus the videos I see on how to turn $500 into a million dollars, how to turn a thousand dollars into six figures in 90 days or one year. Guess technically, yeah. It took you one year because you technically started. So July 2020 is when you got the license. And like you said, first six months were a little tough. And then you boom, had 30K in revenue. And then one year and six months 
you did six figures. Mm -hmm. So, so what a lot of the videos we see on the internet is we only see that. <laughs> the yeah, one year. Absolutely. Absolutely, we don't, yeah. you don't see this, this right here. Mm -hmm. And those of you that are watching that are going through this, that you you tend to overwrite that. Like you, you need to be, we need to be looking at how am I operating in here in the crisis mode? Like I need to be able to, like just like coffee here identified, it wasn't until I broke my jaw, I had to stop talking, I had to change how I was making decisions. What if I would have never went to that party? What would have happened? You know, there's there some people mess themselves up when they when they when they ask that question. Oh, I should have never went to that. Where it's like, well, mm -hmm. wait a minute. If he hadn't gone there, this wouldn't have occurred. Absolutely. You may not have ever picked up rich dad poor dad. You might have gone to you might have become a doctor. Yeah. So it, we need to embrace the suck, <laughs> like mm -hmm. em embrace it. <laughs> and say, yes, this happened to me for me, mm -hmm. for the benefit of me to become the best version of me. And so boom, six years, seven year journey. We're now generating um, six figures and we're on our way to multiple six figures because he also, now we're just adding elements now. So we're gaining experience, he's providing a service and he's getting paid in abundance for that high value that he brings to his clients and then we're adding an element 2023 we're like boom let's let's amp up the content creation with the intent of just loving to share good news helpful information that's going to change people's lives going to transform their paradigm and and that is simply going to feed into the the monetary result All right so this is just phenomenal stuff here thank you for sharing this this is this blows me away could you take a few minutes and just talk a little bit about where where we can find you what Social media platforms are you primarily focused on creating value and content in, and then how people can get a hold of you based on everything we share today. What would be some action steps you would want people to take if they want to jump on a call with you, potentially work with you in the future? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I just want to comment on you know what you mentioned there because um, I really appreciate you kind of highlighting you know all of that and becoming the person in order to achieve those things is so important. I really do see a lot of the struggles that I lived through as like, that's what created the character and created the habits for me to be able to do this stuff. And I, I always, I always had a choice. I believe that's something that all people always have. And we always like, we don't have a choice as to what happens, but we do have a choice as to how we respond in different situations. Am I going to take this and now, uh, you know, blame the world? Am I going to, you know, not, you know, perform? Am I going to, you know, just say, hey, I'm just an unlucky person. I'm just going to not try after that. Or am I going to use this experience and say, okay, what types of lessons are here? You know, what have I learned? How can I use this experience to potentially help other people avoid the situation. And I believe that's, you know, such an important thing that allowed me to continue on is that whenever something happens, I always say I have a choice. If I, you know, uh, get rejected or I lose a client or something along those lines, I always have a choice of how I can respond. Something bad happens, whatever it is, like then a day I can either choose to grow or stay where I'm at in any situation. So I really appreciate you sharing all that stuff. Um, best ways to reach out. Uh, I'm on Instagram as Kofi, the creator, uh, LinkedIn, Kofi Thompson, Facebook, Kofi Thompson as well too. Um, my website is Zion Capital Management, um, or zioncapital.us. Uh, my company is Zion Capital Management. So feel free to check out my website, the content that, you know, I'm sharing on those platforms. Uh, feel free to also DM me as well too. Like I hope that this and what I share was able to inspire and help people start to, you know, kind of see the light, even if they're in the mists of, you know, the rock bottom <laughs> aspects of life, you know, be able to see the light on the end of the tunnel. And I'm more than happy to, you know, share more about my story um, or help you guys out in any way that, uh, you know, I possibly can with, you know, what I do. So feel free to reach out, connect, um, more than happy to, you know, reach out and talk to you guys. Thank you so much for your time, yeah. sharing your story, going, going very, very deep in the meat and potatoes here. My audience loves case studies like this. So just know that you're going to be picking up some really cool some fans that are going to follow you, 
check you out mm -hmm. and really just track your journey as my clients and audits have been tracking my journey as well. And then they've, they're just matching that timeline, just seeing, okay, they're five years ahead. They're seven years ahead. If I'm willing mm -hmm. to put in my five years, if I'm willing to put in my 10 years, I, I can essentially achieve the same result, if not better, right? And, and do it better because now I get to see where coffee messed up. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna avoid that. Exactly. And I'm gonna avoid that, yeah. I'm gonna avoid that. <laughs> you know, and same with me as well. So thank you again. God bless you. God bless those that are, are watching here. I look forward to working with you again and collabing with you, creating some more content in the near future. Yeah. So have a wonderful day. God bless everyone. And we'll be talking soon.